I grew up in uh, Canton, Oklahoma, uh, on a farm, a dairy farm, and left there and came to the University of Oklahoma. I had some exposure to science in the high school. I blew up the chemistry lab, so I decided I shouldn't do chemistry when I got here. So I went into math and I got my BS in math. And then I was very fortunate that uh, Professor uh, Jenny Rude Nielsen uh, recruited me to get a PhD. I joined a very fine fraternity here called Delta Tau Delta. And uh, those made my close friends for life and a few of whom are here in this audience and I'm very pleased with that. After I graduated, I was an ROTC, Air Force. So I got to choose and I went to the best lab that the Air Force had. It was in Boston, Massachusetts, called the Air Force Cambridge Research Labs. And the first thing they said is, my job was to create some instruments to measure something and they couldn't tell me what it was because I didn't have a clearance. So I had to design to measure this unknown source. Didn't know how bright it would be. It, instruments were gonna be on the ground, on balloons, on airplanes. And so they went on for a year and I did that. I designed a set of instruments to do that. And finally I got my clearance and it turned out immediately we started putting those instruments on airplanes and the ground to measure the first United States uh, high altitude nuclear burst that were going on in the Pacific. We found some extremely interesting things in the measurements. So I set up a laboratory and a field program to, to learn the fundamentals of that problem. So my, a large part of my career had to do with measuring the upper atmosphere. And we measured the aurora. We did that with uh, an airplane, uh, significant. But the, still you have to look through some of the atmosphere. So then we put a program together with about 25 rockets over a period of 12 years or so. That program was called ICECAP and we measured the first infrared uh, energy from the aurora. And we finally understood the fundamentals of what goes on in the upper atmosphere. I actually designed the first Department of Defense payload that went on the space shuttle. That was called STS-4. So it was the absolutely first scientific payload that was going into space. And it turned out to be a very important instrument called an interferometer, a Michelson interferometer. And I was too young to know that I should have patented that thing and I wouldn't have to be working today. You know, when I was asked to go to Russia, just after Perestroika, uh, and I was asked to try to find, by our government, I was asked to try to find their equivalent of our spy satellites and also their equivalent of our geosynchronous satellites that do uh, missile detection. And we found them and we started a joint program. And that program is called RAMOS, Russian American Observational Satellites. Uh, and had a lot of experiences for 12 years. In 1988, I was in, uh, inducted into the Oklahoma Hall of Fame. And uh, one of my uh, partners there that was also inducted, one of the others, was David Boren. And so in this picture, he's on my right. And the others are all famous in their own right. 